Today I figured we'd go have a look at two of the more common issues I see within the Microsoft Cloud, and these are ones that you're likely to encounter yourself. First off, naming conventions. Now, the problem here is that names need to be unique, and uh, since you have the ability to share resources between subscriptions, it means it needs to be unique globally. So as an example, if I try to create a new key vault called my demo vault, it fails because frankly, someone out there has already created one called my demo vault. So the quickest and easiest way to resolve this is to have a value that is unique to you. So as an example, I'm now going to give it a post uh, sorry, prefix of uh, tips for IT pros. This way, I know that it's unlikely that someone else will have already used that name. And then any subsequent name behind it is theoretically doesn't matter if it's unique or not because the prefix is taking care of that. So as long as you can find a prefix that is not already used, you shouldn't have a problem with this. And as you can see, although I'm getting a warning message telling me that I don't have an AD object ID, that's fine. I don't have the Azure AD set up on this subscription. Um, I'm not getting a naming conflict. So you can already see basically that that's resolved, at least for this example, immediately because it's coming back already. So that's the most common problem, remembering that object names are unique globally. The next problem, which can also happen, kind of relates more to the older commandlets because you don't see this in the new ones. So as an example, if I go ahead and create a, a new uh, data factory with the older version one commandlet, um, what we'll see here is we get a unable, the missing subscription registration conflict. Now, what does this mean in reality? Um, well, the newer applets tend to actually register it in the background so you don't see this message, and I have tried that. But the older ones don't do this. So if we go and get a list of Azure AD resource, well, sorry, Azure resources, you can see here the, the status of the resources. So these are all not registered because I haven't used any of them yet. So let's filter it down to data factory because obviously this is a very long list. So I'm just going to get the full list of objects and then I'm going to say where provider and the name is Microsoft.DataFactory and you can see status is not registered. So how do we resolve this? Well, that's pretty straightforward. We have a, a register AZ resource provider and then the provider namespace and then just in this case the Microsoft.DataFactory. So once we have a, a status like this, we can see that its status is registering. Um, and we can obviously check this again uh, and get the output. Now, you're not really going to see in real time what the status is, unfortunately, which can be a bit annoying, but you know, we we're gonna say that it's it's doing it in the background um, and, and that's not a problem. So what we could do now is since that's already in place or registering in the background, we don't need to wait for it to change state. Uh, we can just go ahead and run our AD, uh, sorry, Azure uh, Data Factory commandlet again. And so, okay, we now want to try to set it up again because we know that the status is now registering or registered, depending on where we are right now. And this will run, and we should should no longer see the error message because we've registered this uh, the provider. Now, with the set uh, AZ Data Factory v2. This is all done in the background transparently, so you don't need to register it independently.